In this video, we're going to start to take a look and see how we can utilize MATLAB to generate a series solution for a second order differential equation. Now we're going to take a look at the order of the series solution as it starts to increase, and we're going to compare it to the analytic solution. So the only difference between a first order and second order is literally one parameter in the d solve function. So in our first order differential, we just had y at a equals b. Right after that, for a second order, we're just going to have the y prime at c equals d. And we're just going to use this syntax right here to be able to program it. The rest of it's going to be the same. All right. So let's take a look at a second example to where we're going to go ahead and program a second order differential, get the exact solution, three series solutions, plot them, and then be able to figure out what's going on as that increases. So here's our second order differential. Um, x squared plus one quantity y double prime plus x y prime minus y equals zero, centered about the origin, x sub naught equals zero, y zero is one, and then y prime at zero is zero. All right, let's start by getting the exact solution. So we're gonna have our sins of x and y at x, and our exact is gonna be equal to d solve. We're gonna program the x squared plus one times, now remember for a second order, it's diff, y comma x comma two, all right? So make sure that when you want your y double prime, that that's how you type that in, plus x times diff y comma x, and then minus y double equals zero, all right? So that's just the differential equation. And we're gonna have our two initial values, all right? So we're gonna have y at zero, double equals one, Right, so that's this right here. And then finally, we're going to have the subs function. So we're going to substitute into the differential. So diff y comma x, or just diff y. And that's exactly what we're using right now is this third parameter. So diff y um, comma x comma zero double equals zero. And I'm gonna expand this just a little bit so you can all see. So this is the syntax right here. I got a little red underline because I'm not suppressing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. And it's gonna give us a really nice analytic solution. All right, so it's just the square root of X squared plus one. All right, so really nice that we're able to get that. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can get the series solutions. All right, and you probably remember from the last video, all you're gonna do is just literally cut and paste everything that we just did up to the up to the parentheses, and you're going to type expansion point. And this time the expansion point is zero. All right, why is it zero? Well, because remember we said that x naught is going to be zero, right? And the order that we want is going to be three. So we're going to start out by figuring out part b which is a third order, then an eighth order, then a 15th order, all right? And once we get the first one, the rest of them are pretty easy. So we're gonna have order, right? Be careful with your capitalization when you're typing this in, and the order is going to be three, all right? Now I'm gonna execute this just to make sure I get something out of this, all right? Otherwise, no point in doing it, all right? And then here's our solution, all right? So third order um, series solution, not all that, I guess overwhelming or anything like that. Now, we're gonna cut and paste this whole line. And remember, all we're gonna do is just change the threes to eights to get an eighth order polynomial. And then we're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna get a 15th order polynomial, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and execute that just to see what's going on. <clears throat> all right, so here's our third, here's our eighth. Here's our 15th order polynomial. Now, of course, how good of an approximation are these? Well, that's when we're going to plot. Okay, so we're going to do an easy plot of the exact solution. And then we're going to do the hold on. And then we're going to do an easy plot of S3. All right, and I could just copy and paste this a few times to hold on. So I'm going to copy it two more times. I'm going to change this to eight. And I'm going to change this to 15. I'm going to put in the hold off. And then finally, I'm going to type in the legend. And remember, the order was exact for our analytic solution. 
and then we're going to do a comma, and we're going to have order three, and then we're going to have order eight, and then we're going to have order 15. All right. And let's go ahead and execute this. And the real proof of whether this is going to be viable is in the graph. All right, so here's our exact, here's our third, our eighth, our 15th order solution. And then here's our graph of this, okay? Um, now, the cool thing is, is that notice around the point x equals zero, right, which is right here. We can zoom in a lot, right? And it looks like that all the graphs are just going to overlay over top of that, right? So that's pretty cool that we're able to get these solutions that really match up to what our polynomial is going to be or our different polynomials for this. All right. So the last thing we would say is just like before, we might do an f print f statement. All right. And we would say that as the order of n increases, um, the, ac the accuracy, or the we could just say the approximation of the exact solution becomes more reliable. And we can just do a backslash n. All right, hopefully spelling doesn't count because I missed an x here. All right, so it's gonna say act solution instead of exact. So I'll just go ahead and run it one more time. Just so that way if somebody watches it, they know that I'm at least quasi literate. All right, and there we go. Okay, so now that we've seen how to go through and utilize MATLAB to generate series solutions to some of our differential equations whenever possible, um, one of the methods that we also looked at was the Laplace transform. So we're going to take a look and see how MATLAB can be able to help us to generate the Laplace transforms as well as inverse Laplace transforms of functions when appropriate.